that actually produce agility and energy in, in, <laughs> in people. So we have to remember about that as well. All right? Okay, so that's, that's the kind of overview of, of, um, of the kind of approaches to movements mobilization. Um, but another way of uh, looking into kind of nonviolent revolts and predicting nonviolent revolts uh, would be, and I did a, a very simple search uh, in Google about um, Tunisia and Egypt. And particularly I focus on, um, on the period between January 15 and Janu January 25th of 2011. So uh, the period when Ben Ali left Tunisia, whereas revolution in Egypt hasn't yet, hadn't yet happened. And I just typed, you know, Egypt, Tunisia, and I got a number of uh, articles that said Egypt is not like Tunisia. That revolution should, will not happen in, in, in Egypt because of various types of factors. And I listed a couple of them. So people who were, and they were regional experts, you know, various types of uh, pundits, uh, um, uh, um, also experts or, or scholars in, uh, in, revolution, in studies of revolutions. And they said that, well, if we look at Tunisia, if you look at social polarization or kind of social homogeneity, it's much greater in Tunisia than it's in Egypt. Well, you don't have such a great polarization between Muslims and Christians in, in, in Tunisia. So it was much easier then to mobilize people than it would have been in, in Egypt. Then they were looking at nature, nature of regime. Some actually claimed that Ben Ali was not as crazy as Mubarak. But more, being more precise, they were saying that Tunisia, it was a police state, whereas Egypt is military state. <coughs> So, and the loyalty of the military, it's much more assured, particularly because Mubarak comes from military. So the defections in military shouldn't be as easy kind of um, uh, facilitated as, as it might have been in, in Tunisia. Then they were saying that Tunisians were actually more educated than Egyptians. They were more illiterate and they had even access to internet. Many more of them had access to internet than in Egypt. Um, so they were saying, no, that's, that's not possible, again, the revolution. And then they were saying about, uh, uh, well, uh, uh, when they were looking into the organized labor, you know, the first trade unions that uh, were, were established in, in Arab world, they were in Tunisia. So the history of trade unions in Tunisia is very strong. But, it, but such kind of history doesn't exist to such an extent in Egypt. So the labor might not play such an um, important role uh, in terms of weakening the regime in Egypt, like it was in Tunisia. And then uh, finally the pharaoh complex. Well, Egyptians were, you know, they are obedient people. You walk like Egyptian. You don't fight like Egyptian. You just walk. Uh, or you obey like Egyptian. Because, so even the Egyptians may have been able to, you know, accept the hereditary rule that Mubarak was uh, proposing to nominate his uh, son Gamal to take over from him. And, uh, and that would kind of fall within this pharaoh complex that Egyptians had. So within a week after those predictions, revolutions took revolution took place. Not only did it happen, but actually it succeeded in bringing down Mubarak. Not regime, but Mubarak. So uh, the main thing that, they got, uh, that those uh, uh, experts got wrong was the focus on structure. They really didn't look at what ordinary people was, were, were doing. How did they learn from their past mistakes, from the... Um, from the history where they were oppressed, they didn't succeed, and how did they kind of um, uh, took together the experience and learn to design better strategies and tactics. So, what determines movement's emergence? There are a few studies that look at, uh, at this question, the kind of more analytical and, and statistical studies. The first one that you can download from uh, internet, and I believe it's on eClassroom, it's Freedom House study uh, published in 2005 that looks at the environmental factors to explain the, the movement emergence. Uh, and they look at 37 countries that went through the transition uh, towards democracy that experienced the bottom-up civic mobilization. And in essence, their finding was that the regime type, whether it was democracy, whether it was a personalistic rule or sultanistic rule, or whether it was a single party rule, uh, that didn't really matter for the emergence of civil resistance. Civil resistance was present in democracies and in non-democratic countries of various types over history. They also said that in terms of economic uh, uh, development, that the emergence of civil resistance also, um, or that economic development didn't matter so much for the emergence of civil resistance. Civil resistance emerged in uh, least developed countries as well as in more wealthy um, uh, 
uh, democracies and, and wealthy countries. Um, and they also look at the ethnic polarization, um, and this is the example of Tunisia and Egypt, that civil resistance emerged uh, in countries that were more homogeneous and countries that were um, more heter heterogeneous. And finally, they look at the decentralization and centralization nexus. And they discovered a slight correlation that indeed um, the issue of centralization mattered for the emergence of the movement. And they said that the that higher degree of centralization, the greater chances for the emergence of the movement. Now, if you were educated and ferociously um, you know, intellectual dictator reading all the academic studies and you came across of that study, what would you do? Yeah, you would decentralize your country. Now, can you imagine any dictator decentralizing the country, de decentralizing or diffusing his or uh, we have only his, we didn't have her, his powers? No, that goes against the logic of dictatorship. <laughs> so even that kind of, I think, study would not help much dictators. <laughs> but he, he was very benign, I think. You know. He was, he was a, a right? I mean, my, that's why probably he was, uh, he was quite accommodative to Hungarian demands then. Um, and one of the reasons why his monarchy survived. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> until, the, until the war started.